You never know when or where an amazing discovery might be made. Sure, most of the biggest discoveries about the past will be made by archaeologists, but everyday people often strike lucky when they're digging up their gardens or clearing up old barns. Whether the discoveries you're about to see were made by professional archaeologists or members of the public, they all have one thing in common. They're incredible finds that turned up in remarkable circumstances. The rafters of a hay shed seem like a very unlikely place to find the only surviving piece of a 19th century shipwreck. But then we suppose you never know what you might find when you go poking around in an old hay shed. The story goes like this. A vessel called the Maid of Lincoln set off from the Abrolos Islands of West Australia in 1891 with a cargo hold full of guano. The ship was overloaded, and a combination of the excess weight plus bad weather wrecked the ship against the rocks of Jurian Bay not long after it sailed. The crew escaped on a lifeboat and made it to the shore, where they were fortunate enough to encounter the Grigson family and their horse and cart. The Grigsons gave the grateful crew a lift to the nearest town, and the ship's captain left the family with the lifeboat by way of thanks. The Grigsons used it as a fishing boat for years, but stashed it in their hay shed after it sustained damage. That's where it stayed until John Grigson, who is descended from the 19th century Grigsons, found it after inheriting the property in March 2021. It's now on display in a local museum. Most of us can agree that the quality of the feathers in your bedding is important. Some feathers are more comfortable than others and will lead to a better night's sleep. The ancient pre-Viking warriors of Scandinavia shared this concern about beds and feathers, but they weren't worried about sleep. They were concerned about their journey to the afterlife. Archaeologists have recently completed a study of 7th and 8th century graves in the region of Valsgard, Sweden, and noticed that the majority of the beds that warriors were laid to rest on are made from duck down. This isn't a coincidence. According to Nordic beliefs, the right or wrong choice of feathers could speed up or impede your soul's travel to the afterlife. Domestic birds like chickens were bad choices, because they'd slow you down. But the feathers of a goose would speed things up. The most desirable feathers of all were those of eagle owls, but they were a little difficult to acquire. For most warriors, geese or ducks would do just fine. This strange belief might sound odd to our modern ears, but it persisted in some parts of rural Sweden until as recently as the 18th century. The origins of the Chinese nation are shrouded in mystery. It often feels like the more we go looking for the beginning of their civilization, the further back in time we are forced to look. In March 2021, we got another remarkable look at ancient Chinese history when this incredible gold mask was found at the famous site of the Shanqingdui ruins in the country's Sichuan province. Archaeologists think the mask is about 3,000 years old. It was found at the bottom of one of six sacrificial pits that have recently been uncovered in the area. Over 500 ancient artifacts were recovered in total, but this is undoubtedly the pick of the bunch. It's hoped the discoveries will allow researchers to shed new light on the Shangqingjui culture, which is thought to have been one of the first established sophisticated cultures in the entire country. It's amazing that the site is still giving up treasures like this. Excavations have been ongoing since a farmer made the first discoveries while digging a ditch during the 1920s. It's been a full century, and it's still going strong. The UFO rocks are a mystery that most scientists won't even acknowledge the existence of, let alone attempt to explain. You can find the distinctively shaped rocks at several locations all over the world, but most notable of them were found in May 2007 in Shangrao County, Jiangxi Province, China. It's extremely difficult to date stone objects, but scientists are fairly sure that these stones have existed for at least 300 million years. They were found close to the entrance of an old coal mine, but aren't thought to be related to the mine. It's also been noted that they're harder than the stones around them, and don't appear to be from the local area. 
The few scientists that have examined them have written them off as natural occurrences. Not only are they perfectly round and smooth, but they even have little bubbles on the top of them like the hatches of the flying saucers we see in science fiction. Were these stones carved by ancient hands? If so, whose hands and when? You might want to look away for the next few seconds if you're squeamish. Don't say we didn't warn you. In the 19th century, there lived a Frenchman who must have been the most heavily tattooed man of his era. When he died, his body was buried, but not before his skin had been removed and preserved. Here it is, tattoos and all. While preserving segments of tattooed skin as curiosities wasn't unheard of in the 19th century, skinning someone to the bone and preserving all of it is highly unusual. In fact, this is the only known example in Europe. The only other fully preserved human skins of this kind are in Japan. Based on what's inked on the Frenchman's skin, he must have been quite a character. The word bonheur, French for happiness, is written in large capital letters directly above his genitals. His skin is darkened in the years since his death. But in 2021, modern CT scanning technology was used to reveal all of his tattoos in full for the first time. He has 58 of them. Most of them are of humans, particularly a woman called Florine, who appears twice, and the presence of an anchor accompanied by the French for Long Live the Fleet suggests he was a naval officer. As grisly as his hide is, he probably donated it to medical science. Excavations at Pompeii began in 1738 and are still ongoing today. It seems we'll never run out of fascinating things to find there. The most recent high-profile discovery is this ceremonial chariot, which turned up at the site of a villa on the outskirts of the ancient site. The carriage is so well preserved that its original satyr, nymph, and cupid decorations are still clearly visible. Like everything else at Pompeii, the chariot has effectively been frozen in time since the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. Whoever rode in this chariot traveled in comfort and style. They had armrests and backrests in their seat atop four iron wheels. Chariots have been found in Pompeii before, but it's rare to find one that's so beautiful and so completely intact. The surrounding walls and ceilings collapsed as a result of the destruction caused by the volcano, but the chariot remained standing. The elaborate nature of the vehicle means it's unlikely to have been used for day-to-day -day transportation. It's far more likely that it was used for special occasions like weddings and festivals. Around 18,000 years ago, a prehistoric resident of France picked up a conch shell and turned it into a musical instrument specifically a horn. In February 2021, it was finally played again. The horn was first discovered in 1931, close to the entrance of the Maroulas Cave in the foothills of the French Pyrenees. Experts say it's the oldest known conch shell horn in the world, but that's not what it was originally recognized as. Back in the 1930s, experts thought it was a ceremonial drinking vessel. It wasn't until 2016 that the artifact was reappraised and its true nature was revealed. Even then, it took several years to work out whether it would be possible to recreate its sound. Musicologists and wind instrument specialists from the University of Toulouse inspected the conch shell and scientists tested it to ensure that it wouldn't be damaged by someone blowing through it. But eventually, trumpet player Jean-Michel Court got the all clear to give it a toot and found that it plays a surprisingly haunting tone. It's likely that the sound was enhanced by being played inside caves, but we'll never know what context it was used in. They say that good things come in small packages, so we guess this discovery from February 2021 must be extra special. It's a set of lead miniatures that was found inside an imperial era grave in Alba la Romaine, France. The artifacts come from a set of 20 newly discovered graves that were found buried less than two feet beneath the surface of a busy crossroads. 
From the evidence available at the site, it looks like the people who are buried here passed away during the first and second centuries. There were grave goods present in all of the graves when they were checked, but these lead miniatures are unlike anything archaeologists have ever seen before. One of them is a tiny pair of sandals hanging from a coat hook, and the other is a set of four strigils attached to a ring. The symbolism of the objects is unknown, but may have had something to do with whatever their owner's profession or hobbies were in life. The presence of a round masonry structure at the center of all the burials suggests that this is a family plot. It might be connected to the large Roman villa that was found barely 1,000 feet away from here back in 2005. Lyon is one of the most vibrant modern cities in France, with a long and storied history. 2,000 years ago, for example, it was a Roman city known as Lugdunum, and it had a remarkable aqueduct. The remains of the aqueduct were found during a recent archaeological survey that took place prior to the building of a new housing development. What's surprised the experts is that the pipes used in the construction are wooden. Wooden pipes wouldn't normally survive for this long, but the Romans coated these particular pipes in clay. At the time, this would have been a way to ensure they remained watertight, but the clay has also acted as a preservative. Experts think that this might have been part of the much larger Yzeron Aqueduct, built to bring water to the area from the Yzeron River Basin. That was an impressive ancient feat of construction, given the fact that the river basin is more than 12 miles away from the site of these pipes. In fact, the system might have taken longer to build than it remained in use. It seems the Breven Aqueduct was built right on top of it not long after it was completed. If you're an appreciator of fine vintage fashion and you have a taste for old rugs, this one might appeal to you, but it would cost you a lot of money to lay your hands on it. It's the Paziric rug, and it's almost 2,600 years old. Russian archaeologist Sergei Rudenko found it in 1949 in the tomb of a Scythian prince in Mongolia. Centuries ago, the tomb was looted, exposing it to the elements and allowing the freezing weather in. Were it not for that freezing process, the rug might not be quite so well preserved, although the fact that it's made of knotted pile and contains fermented wood also helps a little. Elements of this old piece of carpet are similar to the type of design we might expect to see today. There are depictions of flower blossoms, animals, the sun, and riders on horseback. There's even a winged griffin on one of the borders. At nine feet long and six feet wide, it would take up quite a lot of space in most modern front rooms. The valley it was found in was a popular trade route between Central Asia and China, so it's impossible to say for sure who made the carpet or which country it was made in. There was a time when it was customary in some parts of the world to remove the human heart from the body after death and bury it separately. These standalone heart burials were known as cardiotaphs. In 2014, a cardiotaph was found in Fleurs, Normandy, France, and was taken for an autopsy. The site of the discovery was once a parish church with a cemetery, and the heart burial was inside one of two masonry vaults. The identities of the people buried in the vaults aren't known, but they're thought to have been laid to rest during the 17th century. In France, heart burials were generally reserved for the social elite, so whoever these people were, they were probably a big deal. The heart inside the heart-shaped box was still intact, having been protected by a strange grainy brown substance with a minty smell. The mummified organ still contains arteries, ventricles, and ventricular chambers. In short, someone went to far greater lengths to preserve this heart than they did with the human remains in the vault, which were skeletal when they were discovered. Maybe this is what Celine Dion meant when she sang, My Heart Will Go On. Only three artifacts have ever been taken from inside the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, and one of them was considered missing for more than 70 years. In December 2020, it was finally found again, but it showed up a very long way from home. It's a tiny piece of cedar in a cigar tin, and it's been hiding within the University of Aberdeen's museum in Scotland. 
The chunk of wood is thought to be part of one of the tools that were used to dig out the Queen's Chamber inside the pyramid around 4,500 years ago and was found inside it in 1872, along with a ball and a hook. All three items were taken by British engineer Wayman Dixon and were known as the Dixon relics from then on. The hook and the ball ended up in the British Museum, but the cedar wood was somehow mislabeled and lost. Now it's been rediscovered, the cedar wood has provided a new mystery. The artifact has been carbon dated and proven to be approximately 5,000 years old. That makes it 500 years older than the pyramid it was found inside. Why would the Great Pyramid have been built using tools so old? Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!